Okay, class, let's talk a minute about our trip to the Art Institute of Chicago next week. The Art Institute is an encyclopedic museum. What do you think that means? Carla? That there are a lot of things from different places, cultures, and times, just like an encyclopedia. Yes, right. Art can tell us lots of different things, so you may see art that relates to your own life and personal experiences. But we're not only there to look, we're also there to talk about art. We'll have a docent to guide us. A docent is a museum educator who will help us have conversations about art. Hector, is this going to be lame? I don't know. It's cool that we get out of school. It'll be cool if we get to hang out with Carla and Megan. Brett, Hector, something to share? Okay. Good, moving on. So, what's inside? Is this all old pictures of bowls of fruit or something? Drawing in art class is okay, but I don't want to look at a bunch of boring art. I think, like, maybe a lot of paintings. I don't know, and I don't care. I'm just happy to be out of class. Last time I was here, I saw all sorts of stuff. Paintings, statues, I even saw a video. Sounds all right. The outside is cool. I guess. Come on, everyone, hurry up. Okay, let's review the rules we discussed in class last week. Keep an arm's length distance from the art, and don't touch because the oils from our fingers leave permanent marks. Turn off your cell phones. And remember, no gum. Or food or drinks in the galleries. You may take photographs, but no flash. By following these rules, we help preserve the art for others, just like the people before you protected the art for you to see. And now, here's our docent. Welcome, everyone. Your teacher's right. We want to be careful because everything you'll see today is authentic, the real thing. There are thousands of works of art on display, and some were created thousands of years ago. Great. It is a bunch of old boring art. <laughs> hey, Carla seems kind of into this thing, so just go with it. I don't want to make her mad. Shh! We're going to miss something! Today's tour is art from many places, and we're going to focus on the ways that art depicts everyday life. First stop, the United States. I've been there! <laughs> <laughs> one this is famous there doesn't seem to be much going on at first in the painting nighthawks by edward hopper but let's look closely starting with the people in this scene well there's a couple and a counter guy good and what do we know about these people just by looking at them the woman's bored <laughs> no she's looking at something in her hand what might she be looking at a note who'd write her a note maybe her boyfriend Maybe it's that guy sitting right next to her. Why'd she be reading a note from a guy she's sitting next to? Because he's her boyfriend. What makes you think they're a couple? Well, they're both drinking coffee, like on a date. Or maybe they really like each other, but never do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> so there could be a lot of different things going on in this painting. Could we find more stories? Well, when we first looked at the painting, it just looked like people in a diner. But then we keep looking, and we find more going on. Great. What else? Have any of you eaten at a place like this? My dad took me to an old-fashioned diner. Um, what? Maybe it's about, uh, hmm, light bulbs. Maybe not only regular light bulbs. I have something like these at home. Uh, we put them on our tree. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, but it's just a bunch of bulbs. I, I could make this. Why is this art? That's a good question. Let's investigate further why this is a work of art. Why might the artist have chosen light bulbs to communicate his idea? Well, light bulbs usually go in lamps. And light bulbs give off light? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and they give off heat. Maybe he just liked light bulbs and had a few lying around. Yeah, or maybe he had a bunch he needed to use up. But do you think that this artist, Felix Gonzalez Torres, might be saying something else about an ordinary light bulb? Maybe that we can use everyday objects in different ways? Maybe they represent his ideas. So what do you think about seeing something familiar from our everyday world presented as art in the museum? If I saw a bulb in a lamp at home, it would be like, so what? Now that the bulbs are in a museum, they're more interesting. 
How are they more interesting here? They look awfully bright, so maybe it's supposed to be the light and the dark. Now we've arrived at the last stop on our tour, and this is a sculpture of the Hindu god Vishnu after he changed himself into the form of a boar called Varaha. Do you all know what a boar is? I know this whole thing is boring. It's better than the light bulbs. Oh, Brett, it's not boring. A boar is a wild pig. Right, and you might know that when someone changes their form in a story, that new form is called an avatar. Hey, cool, just like in video games. So Vishnu, now in the form of Varaha the boar, rose from the depths of the Milk Sea Ocean to rescue the world from the evil demon Hiranyaksha. Varaha and the demon fought fiercely, but Varaha defeated him in the end and dipped beneath the water to raise the earth and restore it to its rightful place in the universe. The story of a giant boar rescuing the world may not seem like a part of our lives, but let's compare it to how everyday people can become heroes. Brett, what do you think? Well, I think that maybe he is like... Class, we've got about five minutes left to finish up our sketches. Remember, as you wrap things up, you should be thinking about one of the works you saw in the museum and how you might have told its story. Hey, what are you drawing? Wow, that's really good. Uh, thanks. It's that statue because it's kind of a cool story. I like this kind of art. I like how you drew that demon. He looks like Brett. <laughs> <laughs>